Ciao, everyone. We got a great podcast episode for you today. Vito's agent, Sean Salato. Really cool interview. I wasn't expecting him to have the personality and demeanor he did. Really cool guy, touching on a lot of the Italian values. It's a great episode. You gotta watch the whole thing. And also, if you guys haven't gotten it yet, get your Tommy Cutlets merchandise on the store right now, hardcoreitalians.com. And let's get into the podcast on Diamo. All right, well, let's start it up. We got Sean Stilato in the building. <laughs> Sean, how you doing, man? Handling business? <laughs> I am handling business. Uh, doesn't stop, huh? Strictly business. Yeah. Um, it doesn't stop. You know, competition never sleeps, and I'm uh, I'm excited. It's uh, This has been, obviously, a whirlwind, but at the end of the day, I'm happy for my client. Um, you sign up for this. You sign up for yeah. you coming in second to try to recruit a kid for the draft. You sign up for being a confidant through, you know, unprecedented moments um and you sign up for shining moments that you know could just happen in sport and that's what makes sp- football so special resiliency and you always got to expect the unexpected and, yeah um i prepared my entire life to go after and recruit certain players and uh tommy is uh i'm just so happy for the young man oh, Hottie's work mm-hmm. um you know, him and I, we share the same values. We're proud of our Italian heritage. And, um, yeah, we're in demand right now, let's yeah. say the least. I know. That's awesome. That's the first thing I wanted to ask you is just, like, it's been – because obviously, like you said, it's this is what you're, like, signing up for. But at the same time, this is on a whole nother level. I mean, this has been going absolutely viral. Like, I just want to know what you're feeling the day after all this happens. I mean, I see everybody posting it. ESPN, like you're, like you're everywhere. <laughs> what's yeah. what's been the feeling? How many people are blowing up your phone? What's been going on in your world? Like, what do you? I, you know, I'll be very transparent. It's been insanity. The texts, the calls, the screenshots, seeing you know the good fellas with my head on, you know one of the <laughs> one of the guys that didn't make it, you know, out of the movie, uh, to the end of the movie. Um, but in terms of, it's been fun to see. It's Obviously, uh, this all transpiring on the week of the induction for the National Italian American yeah. Sports Hall of Fame. I feel like that's the the work of our ancestors, you know, that that came before us, that passed on. Yeah. The Italian gods, uh, you know, wanting to kind of mix some things up. <laughs> um, and you know, the root of all our dreams uh, come from from family and who came before us. Uh, I am blessed uh, to be able to do what I do. Wake up every day. I've embraced the highs. I've embraced. I've I've embraced the lows, um, but at the end of the day, I've never been one to be complacent to sit on my hands. Um, and all this, you know, media attention is great, but I'm focused on servicing my clients uh, on a daily basis and and being that confidant and protecting them and fighting for them on and off the field. Because um, you know, Tommy's in demand. We're getting a lot of opportunities. We're we're picking and choosing. And, um, you know, obviously I think it's important to get a, out ahead of this if there's a story to tell because at the end of the day, you know, we can be a, a source of inspiration for all of those that, that are, you know, came, are going to come after us. And the fact of um, way to preserve legacies is to try to do big things and talk about them. And yeah. I think that's what we're, we're able to do through the game we both adore. Yeah, especially too, like you said, it's lining up perfect with the Sports Hall of Fame and like all the athletes – over there, like how many people they inspired, and just to be honored with that is awesome. So, I want to ask you a lot about the Italian side for sure. Um, but as far as the Hall of Fame, just let people know a little bit more about that. Like, you know, I know you know Ron Onesti and what you got going on there, and like just being inducted and your story with with him. So humbling. Um, you know, I, every day when I wake up, I always stop my day vertical uh, before I go horizontal. And my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what are you stunned for? My family, myself, um, you know, has given me strength in dark moments and humbled me in my moments of glory. Um, my athletic career has been a little, a little different. You know, I was undersized. I was small. I was, uh, my dad gave me a football at six years old, and he said, "Hey, you know, someone can outwork you. Someone can be smarter. Uh, no one can. Um, I, you know, I should say, no one can outwork you. Someone can be smarter, faster, and um, use it as your compass." And uh, I always kind of took it in stride athletically and I was fortunate enough to, to be privy to a, a major experience in high school the title of my book no backing down and that's kind of the mantra how I live my life how I go after guys I recruit the underdogs uh, the diamonds and the roughs 
Um, those guys, we relate. We have a lot of a rapport together. I think that's important. Um, and I, that book is, um, you know, it's been a source of inspiration for a lot of people. I, I had an opportunity to go to a boarding school for one year called the Gunnery School. Uh, coincidentally, the owners of the Giants, uh, the Tishes, went there. Uh, a lot older than me. But uh, that year was the most pivotal year of my life. It changed me. It, it made me a lifelong learner. Uh, probably the best coach I've ever played for in terms of making me a student of the game, making me put a premium on education. Coach Hugh Caldera, a uh, good pride paisan, God rest his soul. Uh, I know he'll be here in spirit on Friday night. Uh, and then I have an opportunity to be a dual division one athlete. And um, that was special. And uh, some of my closest relationships were formed there. Uh, and then having the opportunity to play pro ball uh, under Jeff Brom in the Arena League. Um, Jeff's the current coach of Louisville, and um, it was just an amazing moment. And then I transitioned, you know, in terms of where I went from there. With the goal and the mindset, I would still play football if I could. I love the game. I still train like I'm playing. Yeah. Um, as long as Tom Brady, you know, was playing, I had it in my head. I, there's still a shot. <laughs> um, but in terms of the agent business, I saw Jerry Maguire in high school, and I said, you know what? Great movie. A great movie. <laughs> um, you know, the only difference, I wish his name was Jerry O and not Jerry, you know, <laughs> Paisan. But um, with regards to that, that really, I don't know, it, it touched me in a way like, wow, I, if I can't play, what can I do? I want to I be on the business side. Yeah. And I flirted with going the, the grad assistant coaching. I said, you know what, my, my wife, I, oh, I wanted, you know, who I plan on marrying and having kids someday. I said, I got to, I, it's not fair to them. So I threw my hat in the agent ring and it's been a, you know cutting teeth for the last uh, 18 years wow. uh, my own company 10 you know ses sports and i i take pride in what i've built um the caliber of guys i'm only as good as my guys yeah. you know and i i have a good evaluation of talent um but in terms of this hall of fame it's like to be able to you know to scale back and say okay 269 other men and women have been um anointed with this honor and looking at Joe Montana, looking at Vince Lombardi, Dan Marino, Joe DiMaggio, um, Franco Harris. It's just like to stand on the shoulders of those great men. Um, it's pretty special. Yeah. Um, it's an honor to have your name up there with them for it, sure. It really is. And mm -hmm. it, I, I'm just, um, to have my brother is going to be there. I'm, you know, my, my, my wife who, you know, who's Sicilian and Italian, um, <laughs> my, you know, my backbone, my spiritual rock, um, mm -hmm. I owe a lot to her. She makes tremendous sacrifices raising my four daughters to be strong women and uh, young women. Um, and yeah. and, I, and I, I literally, I stand shoulder to shoulder with her. So, um, and then my mom and dad, my mom and dad have been with me every step of the way. Um, but obviously, even before my mom and dad, it's my, my grandparents, yeah. Pasquale and Letizia. They, uh, he, he came over, you know, lowest possible means of ocean transport uh, 1,300 other immigrants on the SS Canopic, uh, with the whole uncertainty, like what's, what's going to happen. And, yeah. uh, for him to, to do what he did and to make ends meet for my dad and his family. And for me to kind of just admire that heroic, um, actions of all our ancestors who came over for, for, for the, for the, you know, for the American dream. Yeah. Um, it's been, it's been special to, to preserve those legacies with them and, yeah. uh, to celebrate, Friday is just going to be um, with Tommy doing what he's doing. It's like the perfect Italian storm. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't ask for a better moment, a better no. time. That's awesome. And just hearing you talk, I feel like you're definitely, you have all the, the values. Like you care about the values. You're honoring the sacrifices. You understand the opportunity. You're talking about God, family. And that's what we're about too. And that's what I love. And I just love hearing that out of your mouth and you're reiterating it. And I think it's awesome. I also like too that you said how you kind of had the underdog like, story and i feel like that's kind of tommy in a way too so um before getting a little bit of that i want to talk how'd you link up with tommy to begin with and did, was he looking for an italian agent like what was the <laughs> you know what it's, it's tommy um you know i represented his former teammate who was a third round pick and okay. uh, i think tommy tommy's a smart really smart guy i mean yeah. you gotta be to be able to uh, comprehend a playbook in syracuse and then comprehend another playbook in illinois making the jump to the most complex playbook uh, in all of sports, an NFL playbook for a quarterback. I think Tommy saw the value um, in me being kind of that gritty boutique guy. Um, Cause you know, let's face it, you get one chance to do this and go through that process. Yeah. Uh, Tommy had a bird's eye view of draft day 
and which is a very humbling experience for everybody. Um, you know, I fought, I scratched, I clawed, I yelled. I literally stood up on a desk yelling <laughs> at a team. And 28 teams, you know, gave Tommy the Heisman. And um, I watched the young man, you know, his backstory being a lead 11 kid. 2018, dark cost for the Heisman Trophy. Going out to the Oregon Open, going against Tua and, and being the MVP. Those things didn't happen overnight. Yeah. Tommy has prepared a lifetime for these moments. Yeah. And let's face it, in sport, either you deliver on those moments or you don't. And that's how your really legacy is played. But through the game of football, resiliency, I think, is such a, a great you know, factor in all of this. And that's what football teaches you. It teaches you resiliency. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy's had a lot of speed bumps to Syracuse, you know. You could get in and say, hey, it was the program and all that and point fingers. He hasn't done that. He's taken the high road. That's uh, awesome. And that's what pros do. Um, Illinois got an opportunity to reinvent themselves and played against great conference and football and went out to the East-West Shrine game and solidified himself there, best quarterback there. A um, couple guys there got their name called. Mm -hmm. uh, and what did we say? We didn't put that as, you know, not the tr tr traditional Italian all time is you forget everything except the grudges. We <laughs> said, you know what? We're going to continue to work. And um, all we need is one team going into the draft. That's what we, we came down to. Um, so I think he, he saw the, you know, the, the value in me and how much I care about my guys and how hard I was going to work for him. And I saw the value in him. I saw awesome. an absolute diamond in the rough. That the diamond was gonna get just like a diamond come you know coming to fruition. It needs all that pressure. Yeah. And f some people feed off pressure, like Tommy and I do, or others, you know, fold. And um, we know. Look at it's an opinion based business. He's got to continue to grind. He's got to continue to improve weekly. And um, you know, he he's staying in the playbook. He's staying in the you know film study. And uh, I, I guess it's an exciting time. Yeah, uh, so that's where his head's at right now, just on to the next game. On to the next, the next yeah, game, locked just, in. Mm -hmm. And we're picking and choosing, you know, where what brands we want to work with. And um, he's he's got a good judge of, of the brands he wants and um, realizes that, you know, one of the greatest ever went through, some, uh, you know, maybe similar, you know, early years uh, when he was winning games was Tom Brady. Yeah. You know, everything was getting thrown. I grew up in New England. I heard all the stories. I had 14 Patriots that won Super Bowl rings on their last three Super Bowls. So, um, yeah, he, um, his family, that's a testament to how he was raised, though. Yeah. You know, his mom and dad, Lexi and Tommy Sr., they're phenomenal parents. Yeah. His late grandmother, you know, was so special to him. My mm -hmm. late grandmother is my, you know, my inspiration, my uh, my foundation of my faith. Um, yeah. And my wife's taken that, that baton with faith in our family and, and really enabled me to really – have a strong level of faith because let's face it we're here we're grinding where we've got goals and dreams but at the end of the day um there's going to be hiccups and speed bumps that come along the way if you don't have faith it's it, that's a tough way to live and as a football player you've got to have faith uh so that's really i put a premium on you know faith and family and football and i think tommy looks through the similar lenses and yeah, you know that's 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 Italian magic right there. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's like one of the best things about the story with what you guys going on is the family. Like, you're kissing his dad, and it's like going viral. And it's I don't know. They just seem like they're so involved. And I'm just thinking about how you said, you know, we didn't get drafted. Just how like humbling it was versus now how like crazy. It's like highs and lows, and the family's there for the whole ride. Like, what are what are what is like the whole family feeling? for him too you know what i mean like is it they, as, fe they feel his pain probably right in every like moment yeah you know? they do and you know as as a proud dad of four children um you, you know that's our greatest accomplishments as parents uh i i know they're beaming with pride and i know they want the best for him and they've made tremendous sacrifices and let's face it all italians moms they're gonna want their kids in the house till they're at least 40 right I mean, maybe <laughs> yeah. have the wife or the girlfriend there as well have to be um and i think him being there that's an extra security blanket being able to kind of go home and and take the helmet off and being able to interact with people that raised you people that gave you life mm -hmm. people you love i mean it's hard when you're going through the highs and the lows of, of, a, of a pro athlete Sometimes a lot of these guys don't get that opportunity to be home, like when you walk through that door and the home cooked meal and having your bed made or uh, being able to sit down on the couch or having 
let's face it, cleansing hugs, Italians, they hug and kiss. You know, I, <laughs> when you care about people, that's what you, you do. And, yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there isn't anything synthetic about, I tell everybody, you know, they're like, what, what happened with that? I say, he kissed me first. I said, <laughs> you know, I had to reciprocate because that's what we do as Italians. And uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a cool moment. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, you guys were, they're probably showing you guys more than they show Taylor Swift at freaking Chiefs games. It was awesome. Yeah. It's just, it's like the entertainment of the night. I mean, there was a few things like they got you on the phone. And the one thing that was going viral when you're talking to Tommy, yeah. then they got you guys kissing, then they got you guys doing the hand. There are so many like moments I've seen blown. There's another thing I was scrolling and it said, uh, like you like Peyton Manning, you didn't like what the Manning said about you or something. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> this yeah, is going I, crazy. I was, you know, I was disappointed, you know, to hear that from Peyton Manning. Let's face it, Peyton, hell of a football player, um, a lot of success, a lot of people look up to him, and. I live my life of being curious, not judgmental. Yeah. And for him, never meeting me, being the dad of four daughters, and to make a yeah. statement I mean, like that. Yeah, well, they said, I, I think they said, like, they had a source that gave him that name or something. What, I mean, who do you think could have? I mean, I, I look at it as a source. What credibility? Show me some facts to back that up. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What, because I wear a fedora, or I, I, you know, I had gold sneakers on, or, I mean, that's just... That's crazy. Uh, that was in, it was insulting to my wife and my kids. But look, it. I guess uh, everybody's wired differently. You know what I mean. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm I'm proud of my Italian heritage. Yeah, I'm exactly. proud my dad's a first generation. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's uh, something I I showcase through a fedora. Yeah, you know, through my my, my horn. I mean, that's those stuff mean that means a lot. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it's unfortunate, but you know I I've always been one to count the wins, not the losses. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it's um, I think I was listening to you on another podcast, and you just said how like Frank Sinatra inspired you, and that's why you wear the fedora and things like that. Like, yeah. I love it personally. I think it's you know, and I don't know. I mean, if it's giving you, I mean, it's getting getting attention too. People love it too. So yeah, it's my it's you know I've always admired. My wife thinks my first life was in the 1920s. <laughs> so because uh, I do like the fedoras, I like the three piece suits. Um, but a lot of people don't know my my late grandmother worked in a men's department store, finally in Boston. I mean, this is how Italian and 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 gritty she was. Those those values that came across the Atlantic on that boat. Uh, she literally would walk a mile to the bus stop. She would take a bus to Wonderland, hop on a train, and then train into downtown Boston. And she did that for like forty or fifty hours a week up until she was eighty six years old. Wow. And incredible widow, widow for 37 years. So when I'm, I spoke, I got to visit uh, De La Salle Institute today, and I got to, yeah. And I brought some goodies and gifts for the, uh, for the uh, uh, unified basketball team and the kids. And 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 I just said, one kid's like, man, what can you do about anxiety? Um, it's my wife calling, um, <laughs> no honey. I'm, I'm doing a live podcast, but I I'm I'm just. Answering the Tell phone. her we said hey. They hardcore <laughs> Italians said hello. They promised. Wow, she hung up on me. Jeez, <laughs> my own. Um, so, but one of the the kids comes out and says, "What do you do for anxiety? Like, how do you cope with it?" Like, yeah. Are you? I said, you know what? I said, as an agent, I get agina. You know, I get I get anxious. Um, but at the end of the day, I take a step back. And I look around my man cave, my office, and I say, wow, I, I look at my grandparents, how happy they, they were together. And then I got a picture of the SS Connor pick. And just my, I think about like their levels of anxiety. Yeah, like, and you so put it in perspective. At my darkest days, I reflect on all those who sacrificed. And I mean, that, think about it. We got cell phones. Yeah. We've got cars. We got, the, <laughs> you know, I mean, nearly flying cars. You got, you know, to, you know toasters and refrigerators and, just all the tech, technical uh, things you have at your fingertips. Yeah, we had it easy compared easy to compared our, to an yeah, yeah, our ancestors. Not slaughtering yep. animals in the backyard, or you know, walking three miles to to the store. Or, I mean, just so I I told him I said, listen, you got to reflect on everybody. And he was a minority kid. I said, why don't you think yeah. back a hundred years? Think back where where your ancestors came from mm -hmm. and how the struggles they had, and then reflect to where you are at this moment and why you're so anxious yeah i said dude you don't have any problems yeah i said you got you got a school when you walk through these doors you got every resources you need need resource to be to make something out of yourself and the the kids that can't understand that i mean it's 
as we know, our adolescence feels like an eternity, but it's a heartbeat in life. Yeah. And I, th I feel that's something where a lot of people live in regret as they get older because they didn't listen to Frank Sinatra's song, My Way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something yeah. that, that that's relatable if they can kind of understand that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking, too, just as you were talking, like how to get more people to have that perspective and, and think that way, which... By the way, that's an awesome answer you gave on the spot to the kid. That's cool. Like, yeah, that's awesome. It was. I had a, I, he kind of caught me off guard, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because I'd be lying. Let's say if I don't get it, like, over, like, sometimes anxiety, you know, you're going into a big meeting, a uh, huge game, uh, you, you're recruiting a kid for 12 months. Yeah. Coming down to the final, you know, final decision. And, um, you know, but it's, you know, I guess it, uh, experience creates wisdom, right? And yeah. That's what it comes down to. I've, I've had, years i wasn't always wired like that so um but yeah that's that's been a cool way to look through those lenses mm -hmm. yeah and i think too just like how you you guys are playing into the heritage and roots and just doing the hand gesture getting people thinking about their roots i just feel like that helps a lot too because they're it's not letting things die off people are remembering where they came from if people have a, a grandparent or something that's italian or even anybody's probably thinking about where they came from and their heritage when they see like you guys having fun with it so I think it's awesome. You're kind of inspiring that way of thinking back again. So um, I appreciate everything you're doing with all that, you know. Uh, I, it's it's my pleasure. And I appreciate what you guys are doing. You guys are, are proud of, you know, the heritage as well. And it's beautiful to see um, you guys really creating a brand and an image. And, um, yeah, Tommy, I look at it like there's so many people in today's society that are, that are just hurting. And there's so many underdogs out there that maybe never get that shot. And when people watch Tommy DeVito, part of them watch themselves. Yeah. Part of them, they, they, he, Tommy's giving a lot of people hope, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of kids hope. I mean, he's the second athlete out of Cedar Grove to to, to really make it. Yeah. Um, but he's far from you know he's far from content. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's important. And then you look at the whole Italian heritage and the passion um, and the premiums Italian put on family. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, Italians, what do we love? We love fashion. We love family. We love food. jewelry. <laughs> Tutte! <laughs> Sebastian um, is another one. That, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I always admire him how funny he is. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's it's been interesting. Mm -hmm. What do you think is maybe one thing, just with all this media attention and stuff right now, what do you think is one thing that you feel like people maybe don't understand about you or Tommy or the situation, what's going on, like, behind the scenes that you wish more people knew if they're not italian they're not going to truly understand so <laughs> it's uh, an italian thing it's an italian <laughs> thing uh i think you know look at there's been a lot of like if you look at through time uh where certain things of our focus through um periods of history um and i think which makes the nfl so unique and different a there's roughly 1696 jobs there's not a lot of employment yeah. If you look at global populations, you know, probably over 8 billion now, just under. So for him to be able to travel the road he did and to be able to play in one of the biggest markets, boyhood team, local boy makes good. Um, I just think it's 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 a really cool story. And it's mm -hmm. what makes the NFL so, so unique is that in today's times, if you're talented and can play, there's ways to be discovered and found. And. Tommy was on a lot of radars though, and Tommy um, was definitely labeled by where he played at as a as a baller, as a gamer, as a kid that's poised under pressure um, mm -hmm. and delivered in key moments. So I think his story is just really it resonates with a lot of people, and it's the reason why, which makes the NFL so so unique and cool and hip and just kind of a, a monopoly, you know, because. Yeah. They can, uh, you know, you can go from overnight to 5,000 social media followers to six figures like that. If, I mean, you can, uh, if your fans have access to you, you know, it makes the whole platform of the NFL a smaller place, which is what's great for the brand. It's great for the fans. It's great for the athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like I've seen you guys out a couple of times. Has it been like, what's the response been just when you guys are out and New York, New Jersey, like, are you getting swarmed with people? Like, are people, like, fans loving it? What's they been the response? They're absolutely loving it. I mean, <laughs> he was in the airport. He had to kind of get escorted out by security. 
I mean, I was just at Gibson's and I literally, I took 30 selfies. It was kind of funny. I'm like, I'm just, I'm his agent. That's it. Uh, I'm a dad of four, but I am getting inducted. So, uh, yeah. but it was cool. I mean, it, it, it's definitely cool. Cause it's, it's something to talk about. It's fun. And, um, I don't know. I just, I have a passion for people. I love to pe see people happy. Mm -hmm. Um, I love to see people's dreams come true and be a source of inspiration and motivation for, you know, maybe some Italian American, uh, younger kid that says, you know what? Wow. That's cool. I want to be a sports agent someday. Yeah. You know, I want to, awesome. I want to get inducted to the national Italian American sports hall of fame. I mean, I'm not six, four, 250 pounds. I grew up in royalty. Uh, you know, I, I did it through, you know, grit, resiliency, tenacity, you know, all the all the values that my uh, ancestors carried across the Atlantic. And it, it definitely, it feels good. Thanks so much for tuning into the podcast. There's a bonus five to 10 minutes exclusively on Apple and Spotify. So please be sure to check us out there. If you enjoyed the podcast, please give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.